Hey -o, and what is up gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV today. Earlier today, Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated broke the news that has got the wrestling world all a buzz as Vince McMahon and the WWE have appointed Eric Bischoff and Paul Heyman as heads of the creative direction of Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live, respectively. And while this is a fantastic decision for a million reasons, there are a couple of reasons to have a little bit of a cause for concern. And we are here to talk about it right here and right now. My name is Nick Nightmare, and you are watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's breaking news special report. WWE shakeup going down. Let's do it. Time for another good idea, bad idea. Good idea. It is definitely a good idea that they have come up with to try to steer the ship. Because as we all know, especially if you're a fan of this show, we have been bringing the hammer down on Monday Night Raw like never before in the last few weeks. With the new rule changes for the commercial breaks and all of their creative decisions, every step they take seemingly with multiple mistakes, the best thing you could do is bring in fresh eyes and fresh minds with fresh ideas. And when you want to talk about having hope... You definitely can have hope when you look at the help that they are bringing in. These are two of the most creative minds in all of professional wrestling. They have been in the positions that they are being placed in before. They have both been on the creative side of things. They know how to deal with Vince McMahon. They know exactly what they are in store for. And they still took this challenge to try to steer the ship straight and get the WWE back on course and make these shows feel like wrestling again. That's what everybody's going to be telling you. Everybody's going to be talking about how great this is. It's going to change everything. It's going to save the world of the WWE, and that could very well be a possibility. But before we get into why this is going to be such a great idea for everything, I, like... <laughs> like Wade Barrett, have a little bit of bad news. Bad idea. Some of the reasons why this might be a bad idea, one of the things that gives me the biggest cause for concern is this decision is another example of one of the biggest problems with the WWE that we all have been saying week after week, big show after big show, not big show the wrestler, big show as in big pay-per-view after big pay-per-view, when things are down. When the ratings are down, when the ticket sales are down, when the attendance and the network subscriptions are down, what is the WWE's go-to move? They bring back names from the past. We see it all the time. They try to generate interest by bringing in a Batista, by bringing in The Undertaker. We've seen Goldberg, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's been around for 15 years already. You can't tell me he's not a name for the, from the past just because he's relevant doesn't mean he's not kind of old news. He's not the next big thing anymore. At one time, he was. But now he's just another guy coming in part-time that used to be a really big deal, which is why we can't stomach him for the most part. They bring in The Rock on multiple occasions. They bring back Triple H and Randy Orton to have a meaningless match in the middle of nowhere. These are their answers. Well, the fans aren't watching. Let's bring back the old guys that they're familiar with. Well, the storylines and the writing sucks. Let's bring back these old guys that the fans are familiar with. Two guys that the fans are going to be like, holy shit, Bischoff's back. I'm back. And we're all fucking happy about it. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm happy about this. But I say all of this because I don't understand why they are looking to the past when the answer is right in front of their faces. It's underneath the corporate ladder and it's got the biggest nose in professional wrestling at the head. 
The answer is simple. They don't need to go and bring in a Bischoff and bring in a Heyman. They need to give more control and delegate more responsibility to Triple H, who has proven to have his finger on the pulse of what the fans want to see in the ring right now. Between what he's been doing in NXT and NXT UK, you cannot tell me that that is not a fact. And some of the reasons why I am concerned about this and why I feel like they should have just did that instead of bringing these two guys back is because they could end up just being a couple of scapegoats. While on the one hand, they could turn things around and could make everything great, they could also just end up being stifled by Vince McMahon. It is my biggest concern amongst the whole thing. Will Vince McMahon even listen to these two guys? We know he's not going to listen to Triple H. He doesn't even want Triple H in that position, which is baffling to me. That he wouldn't just make that move. And he brings in these guys instead. But in, at the end of the day, everything still has to go through Vince, right? So what does it matter if they come up with some of the greatest ideas that we could see for some of the best talent in the world? Only for Vince to know. Sorry, Bish. We're not doing that, Paul. <laughs> I don't like that. Where's the Roman Reigns promo at the beginning of Raw? And we can definitely see a clash before we're even on the course of being in the right direction. This, you can, and don't tell me, oh, that's not going to happen. This man has a staff of creative writers that he pays to give him the best show they could possibly put forward, and he has been known to take that show and scrap it and rewrite it with just minutes to go before the show hits live TV. Who's to say he won't do the very same thing to these two guys? But enough of the negative and enough of trying to, to tell you guys why this might not really work out. Let's do what we don't do for the most part on this channel and let's be a little bit of a positive note because I am very excited at the possibility of what could be coming at us. But everybody needs to calm down because it's not going to happen overnight. I'm sure we will see some sort of a change in the shows just based off of how they're presented to us with both of these guys at the head of each show. But I don't expect it to happen this Monday. And if it does, I'll be ecstatic. And I will sit here and tell you guys I was wrong. But I expect this to be a gradual integration of these guys. They're not just going to come out and just give you a whole new Raw and SmackDown. I don't believe that's what's going to happen. But why do we like this? Why is everybody so excited? Why is this the buzz of the wrestling world? Well, because Paul Heyman. Let's do Paul Heyman first. The man has an eye for talent that is unlike any of it. He has an emphasis... He emphasizes character development and storyline. That is the way ECW got such a huge following because of the characters that this man created. Guys like Raven, Tommy Dreamer, The Sandman, Taz, Sabu, Stone Cold Steve Austin even got some of his swag from when he was spending time in ECW. The same could be said for Chris Jericho and Eddie Guerrero. Every time Paul Heyman seen potential in somebody, like a Rob Van Dam. How big of a star is Rob Van Dam? And you can thank Paul Heyman for all of that. And that's what we need on Monday Night Raw. We need character development. We need storylines. We need an emphasis on character, not just randomness. And Paul Heyman can definitely bring us back to that. His his leadership at ECW and the way he put forth his programming was influential in the evolution of professional wrestling to what we know it to be today. Having a man like him at the helm is something you should all be very excited for. And don't sit here and be a stupid fan, all right? Don't sit here and, and assume that he's going to be Paul Heyman, the manager, because both of these guys, and in these positions that they have taken, they are not specifically an on-air role. They're not going to come out and be the general managers and be in charge of the show. If they did, I wouldn't mind that at all, especially in the case of Eric Bischoff. But that's not the road we're traveling. These guys are going to be head of the creative direction of the show. That doesn't necessarily mean they are going to take over and dominate the shows. And both of these minds are the type of people you would want in that position. They are going to succeed. They're going to fail in certain aspects. You can't do everything 100% right all the time. But it's definitely a step in the right direction. 
Paul Heyman. Again, this is this could also be looked at as one of the reasons why I'm concerned, but Paul Heyman is the guy that wanted to book CM Punk as his World Heavyweight Champion during the relaunch of ECW when Vince took it over. And he was stopped. He was stifled. The man recognized CM Punk is a star. The crowd wants CM Punk. I have CM Punk. I'm going to make him my champion. And Vince, because he has final say, changed the direction of the ECW Elimination Chamber where Punk was supposed to be crowned only to have it go to the big show so that he could follow that up with a program against Bobby Lashley. That's one of the most Vince McMahon things Vince McMahon has ever done. And this is the same kind of stuff I'm afraid might happen in the future. But the fact that Paul Heyman has that mindset, like I said, he knows talent and he knows how to use it. If he's steering the ship, maybe it'll be smooth sailing, at least for a little while. Until Vince gets mad that he's being shown up by his two greatest rivals. Huh? How about that? You don't think Vince has a little bit of pride in there? You don't think he's going to do that at some point? I don't know. Maybe I'm looking too much into it. In the case of Eric Bischoff, Eric Bischoff is an excellent television producer. He beat the WWE for 83 weeks consecutively at their own game. He believes in the mantra, controversy creates cash, and we can use a little bit of controversy in the WWE right now. They have enough cash. They don't need cash, but they definitely need a little bit of controversy. And there is maybe nobody more controversial than the Bish himself. He knows how to generate a buzz. He knows how to get people talking. And that's what we need. And it will definitely give a completely different feel to SmackDown Live. Because these two guys, while they are both two geniuses at what they do and both very good at what they do they do things in a very different way so the red show and the blue show are going to feel vastly different and maybe we'll get that little bit of fire of competition between these two brands again maybe the brand split will mean something by bringing these two guys aboard i don't know but it's exciting to see the prospects of how good this could actually turn out in the end However, let us not forget, although Bischoff was one of the greatest WWE general managers on screen that they probably have ever had, WCW, much like ECW, was a financial disaster, and while his exit from WCW was more of a political business type move than anything else, you cannot forget that WCW became almost unwatchable underneath his thumb. And when he finally was exited from the company, it that's when WCW really just hit the bottom of the barrel and I couldn't even be bothered flipping over anymore. Because Vince Russo was in charge and everything was garbage. And there was, even when Bischoff came back, it was so far gone that even he couldn't save it. Though he had some really interesting and fun ideas that could have changed the face of professional wrestling altogether had he been able to execute them. It just wasn't meant to be. The same thing for Paul Heyman. You know, he has so many hits, but he has a whole lot of misses as well. For every Tommy Dreamer and Taz, there's a blue meanie out there. You know, there's... (laughs) And I know these guys have a fan base, and it's, it's not a disrespectful thing, but the blue meanie's not all the way up here. You know, you think about Tommy Dreamer, you think WWE Hall of Famer, you think the innovator of violence, one of the most extreme people in the world. You don't really think that when you think Blue Meanie. Was most people, when we think about the Blue Meanie, we think about JBL knocking him out and making his face all bloody and disgusting. But like I said, not everything is going to be golden. You, I'm not going to expect to sit down Monday night and tell you guys, oh my God, Paul Heyman fixed everything and we are back in business, guys. No, that's not what's going to happen. It is going to be a very interesting summer with these two guys in in charge. And I have such great hope. I know at some points it might seem the way I'm talking to you guys, like I I feel like this is going to be a disaster. And while that could very well be, that is not what I want to see happen here. I am very excited at this, this prospect. I am just so confused. Why doing this and adding two more people to the payroll (laughs) is the answer 
to Vince instead of, you know what, Hunter? Everything you're doing is great. Take over, sell out. NXT is doing the best ever. I take all your talent, and you still do better than me. Why don't you do what you do for me up here? Give them like the first hour. You know, give them just a few segments. That could very well still happen. You don't think Paul Heyman and Paul Levesque are going to be chit-chatting in the back. You got another thing coming. The same could very much hold true. Triple H could be the angel on the shoulder of both of these guys and guide us all to a much bigger and better promised land when it comes to professional wrestling. I guarantee you, everybody else you're going to listen to talk about this is probably not going to bring up that fact. Nobody else that I have seen has even mentioned the fact that I, that they don't understand why Triple H has been glossed over. When he is so clearly the answer to the problem. But, let's not shit all over it. Let's accept this gracious gift. If you watch me on Monday, I'm pretty sure I prayed for this. Maybe the wrestling gods have answered my prayers by making this happen. I said, please, can we just fix professional wrestling? And maybe this is it. But I say maybe. I'm not sitting here with everybody else going, oh, this is it. This is going to be the best thing ever. I certainly hope it is. But we are still talking about a, a show that at the end of the day has to be signed off on by the craziest old man that there is. And the fact that Bischoff and Heyman come from that same era, from the 20 years ago during the Monday Night Wars when things were hot and ECW was doing its thing and it was hot, that's all in the past. All of their accolades, all of those things they did are in the past when you got somebody doing it right now. It just doesn't make sense to me. But like I said, I keep going a little bit back and forth there because it's it's just so confusing to me why that was the decision. But this is probably the most hopeful I have ever felt for the future of my favorite professional wrestling show. It hasn't been good. It has not been good. And you'd have to believe that there is no way that it can't get better just by these guys' mere presence. It cannot possibly be the same dribble that we have been being put through each and every single Monday night anymore. And now with the Fox merger coming up and Bischoff being involved, him with his, like I said, he's a great television producer, his experience there, he might shoot the show a little bit differently. We may go back to that really different feel on SmackDown Live. And before we get out of here, let's talk about the official report so you guys can get the semantics of exactly what was going down. This coming from SportsIllustrated.com. WWE has named Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff as executive directors. Heyman is set to become the executive director of Monday Night Raw, while Bischoff will fill the same role for SmackDown Live. Both will report directly to WWE Chairman and CEO Vince McMahon. This is where I'm afraid the most. Because like I said, this is a man that has been known to scrap everything and just rewrite it himself. And I believe the first time that happens might be the night that both of these guys hand in their notice. But that's a long, hopefully that's a long, long way from now. Continuing on, WWE confirmed the news with Sports Illustrated with an official announcement, which will be expected later today. The two positions are full-time executive roles with no plans at this current time to be introduced as part of television storylines, which is key. That is key, because you know that they are not in it for themselves. They are not going to be pushing themselves and pushing their agendas. They are just going to be doing what's best for the show. Paul Heyman, overseeing the creative development of Raw, is a, is scintillating news for wrestling fans. Absolutely it is. Best known as a pioneer for his innovative work as ECW president from 1993 to 2001, Paul Heyman took the company to unfathomable heights on pay-per-view and through a national cable television deal with TNN. Those were the days, man. Those were the days. He is a must-see attraction as an on-screen performer as the advocate for Barack Lesnar, but Heyman's longest-lasting work happens off-camera with the character development of many on the WWE roster. What was I telling you? I didn't even read this article before we did this. Yeah, and, and there you go. Even Sports Illustrated knows. 
That's Heyman's forte. Character, development, and he's already been doing that with some of the people on the roster, and now that he has a more hands-on approach and more important position, it's going to mean a whole lot more. Bischoff will also work directly with executives from Fox, which will air SmackDown Live beginning this October. The former WCW president, immortal in the industry for igniting the New World Order storyline, started a wrestling war in 95 against Vince McMahon's WWE on Monday nights. With Bischoff in charge, WCW's Nitro even defeated Vince McMahon's Monday Night Raw in the television ratings for 83 consecutive weeks. Bischoff made his WWE debut in the summer of 2002, appearing as the Raw General Manager. His full-time run with the company ended in 2007, but has made the occasional return, most recently at the 25th anniversary show of Monday Night Raw, which was awful, in January of 2018. Bischoff is a valuable addition for WWE. Most recently, he lent his expertise to Conrad Thompson's 83 Weeks podcast on Westwood One. Love Conrad Thompson. As well as delivered a TED Talk last November on how the news media is copying from pro wrestling. Which is, I've never seen that. I'm going to have to go watch that because that's, that's amazing. A former New York Times best-selling author, Bischoff is also serving as a producer on the upcoming Hulk Hogan biopic starring Chris Hemsworth to play Hulk Hogan. This is the article from Sports Illustrated, and it has set the wrestling world ablaze. The official statement I have not seen as of this recording of this breaking news broadcast, but if any further developments transpire in what is about to be the biggest news story in professional wrestling of the year, especially if they turn things around and make things great again. I, I, I don't mean to say that, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean. I, I'm not trying to copy the mantra of the president. I'm, I'm just telling you that that's what we want. We want to return to greatness. These two, these two guys have the capabilities to do so. I'm not going to put my hat all in yet. I'm seeing everybody else pretty much jizzing all over themselves. Oh my God, everything's going to be great again. Let's calm down, everybody. Let's see what happens. Because no matter who they bring in, they could bring in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. (laughs) He has to check in with Vince McMahon before we go live. And that's where everything could still completely go off the rails. You just have to hope that he's smart enough to bring these guys in and actually use their ideas and not just have them there and and do nothing with what they give you. No, you know, I don't like anything that you guys are writing. We're going to do this show. The Roman Reigns show. The Charlotte Flair show. It'll be a very interesting week of wrestling television. I expect the ratings of this show to go through the roof because everybody who's anybody is going to be tuning in to Monday Night Raw. And if this is indeed just a ploy to pop the rating and we just keep getting Vince McMahon style television, it's not going to last for long. But let's hope that is not the case. Thank you, Sledgeheads, for being here with another episode brought to you guys by the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, which you can only find right here on Sledgehammer TV. We also are available in audio format on all of your most popular podcast listening services from iTunes to Podbean, Stitcher Radio, as well as Spotify. If you want to take us with you on the go and you don't want to keep seeing my face, maybe you don't like my hats, maybe you don't like my hammer, you could just listen and that'll be just fine for me. So you could find us on all of those platforms. You could be following me on Twitter at Nick Nightmare is the handle, or you could be checking out one of the coolest Instagram accounts in all of professional wrestling at Nick underscore Nightmare. The Nick is spelt N-I-C, not N-I-C-K. It's N-I-C underscore a nightmare. And then you can find me on Instagram. You can follow my House of Glory road that I'm on. You can follow me as I'm trying to change my body and get my fitness up or just see what I do in my personal life. And uh, it's very interesting. So go check out the Instagram account if you're not there with me already. Since we're checking things out, don't forget to check out my Pro Wrestling Crate unboxing, which dropped live last night here on the channel, as well as the Monday Night Raw review and the SmackDown Live review. 
Stomping Grounds review. It, there's reviews all over the place, and if you're tired of listening and talking about pro wrestling, I got you covered there too, because we reviewed the shit out of the Dark Phoenix movie in our Hammering Hollywood episodes. We also have plenty of Game of Thrones and their fiery crash end of the road, which we covered here on this channel. We have the Avengers up there and much more movie stuff coming at you guys in the future. If you're looking for more of that, it will be incoming. But if you are here just for your pro wrestling, I got you covered for that as well. I am the leader of the coolest and fastest growing faction of wrestling fans in the entire YouTube wrestling community. And I want to thank each and every one of you guys for being a part of this show with me. Without you, there is no me. And I'd be just sitting here talking to a little logic camera and I would be an absolute crazy person. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys being with me here. If you are not already a member of the Sledgehammer TV family, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button right now. Ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything coming at you. We will also be doing more 2K19 simulations going into Extreme Rules as soon as they announce a match at Extreme Rules that I want to do. Because as of right now, I could care less about any of that. But no matter what you guys decide to watch, if you enjoyed anything we had to say here today, make sure you smash that thumbs up. If you're happy about Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff coming aboard, make sure you hit that thumbs up and let me know how you guys are feeling down in the comments section below. I am feeling energized and pumped up by this news. Plus, it's also about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm not sitting here after you know, sitting through a disgusting three-hour Monday Night Raw, all drained of my energy, so that's why we're all lamped up. It's a good day for professional wrestling, and let's hope it continues down that path. And make sure you share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they haven't heard the news yet that's going to be taking the wrestling world by storm all week long. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is the team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, his tag team partner, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world, and you will never find another podcast or YouTube show anywhere in the world that has a world championship microphone. His name is Blue the Snowball. The most important member of the team, as always, is each and every one of you. Let's get this channel to 2,000 subscribers. Before we get to Extreme Rules, I'll be forever grateful to you guys if we can make that happen. That, my friends, is going to do it, and we are out of here, and we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show, The Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, only on Sledgehammer TV, right here on YouTube.com. Boom. Heyman and Bischoff. What? <laughs>